All right, so problem five from the free response section of the 2013 AP Calculus practice exam, we got a graph. <laughs> so this triangle, semicircle, and a line. So we got to solve these. For part one, we got we to gotta evaluate, find g of negative six and g of three. This is a graph of f, and we're told that g of x is equal to this integral. So let's work through it. Let's find g of negative six, yeah? This will be equal to, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just replace that X there with um, our negative six. You see then essentially, it's essentially just finding this integral and we have a picture of it. So we can just find the area geometrically. Now, since the endpoints are going backwards, we just multiply whatever our answer is by negative one. So going through this, we're gonna have this triangle here, um, four by five, so 20 divided by two, 10. So we're gonna have 10 plus a semicircle, radius of two. So one half pi times two squared for the semicircle. And then what we're gonna have here is the small triangle below the curve. So we're gonna have minus one half of two, so it's, a, it's a two by one, so two. So it's just one, minus one, yeah. Um, then we just simplify this. Always gotta make sure I don't make a little mistake because that's what I do. It's very basic stuff, so minus, so 10 minus one. What did I do? Oh, yeah, no. yeah, negative 10. Oh, and I completely just, <laughs> this is what I, I did much more work than I needed to. So let that be a lesson for you guys. So if you guys were confused, I'm going to erase this because all we had to do is the first part. We're only going up to negative two. <laughs> Filling this triangle, but I mean, I kind of already help you with some of the future parts, so it's not an issue because you know you'll see. So this is just going to be negative one times ten. So this is just negative ten. Yep. All right, part or this, the second one, g of three. That'll be the integral from negative two to three. From negative two to three. Okay, so yeah, see, so whoa, well, there you go. So see, this is the half circle right there, which is the one half pi times two squared minus the one. I mean, I don't even have to, I mean, this part I just, didn't even, it's, it's just, it's starting here, I guess. I got over, I got over excited. So four, half of four, two pi, so it's just two pi minus one. Yeah. All right. G of zero or G prime of zero. So then we just apply the different, did the differentiation operation to the integration operation, which they undo each other. So this is just, this integral being you know canceled away so let's do this let's put this inside first so we replace that x with a zero negative two to zero of f of t dt but we're basically taking the derivative of this whole thing whatever this is we're going to take the derivative of but it doesn't matter because we this is just a sec second fundamental theorem of calculus when you do that you just basically plug in whatever that point is, and you're gonna get f of zero. And since we have the graph of f here, we just look at where f of zero is, and that's gonna be at zero two. So f of zero is two, and g prime of zero is two. Nice, right, moving right along. Find all the values of x on the open interval where 
for which graph of G has a horizontal tangent. Determine whether G has a local max, local min, or neither at these values. Justify your answers. Okay, first let's look at the horizontal tangents. This is G, where do you find G? Okay. Remember G have horizontal tangents. Well, this is not the graph of G, this is the graph of F. So we want to basically find where we or where the graph of F would be equal to the algebra of the G. So I guess let me go back to this just so that doesn't sound very clear. When we're trying to find if, if we don't have a graph, you're trying to find the horizontal tangent line, then you're basically finding where is the derivative of the function equal to zero. So we want to find g prime of x equal to zero. Again, we don't have a picture of g of x, we have a picture of f of x. However, we know that g prime is equal to f of x. So g prime of x is equal to f of x. So taking this, we want to just find where is f of x equal to zero. So we're on that graph with f of x be equal to zero. We have two points at negative two and two. Now, you want to understand what's going on before. So like before two and negative, before two and after two, so this point right here, the graph is positive, positive, positive. It stays above the x-axis. It stays positive until negative two. After negative two, it goes from positive to negative. Now, so you want to understand these that this graph represents the derivative of g. So when the graph stays positive after after a critical point, so let's say you have a critical point that's you know a two, or in this case negative two. If it, if it the graph is still um increasing. That, you know, that doesn't mean anything. It's not going to be local minimum or maximum because the graph is still increasing in value. It's, and, but at x equals, what was that? At two, when x equals two, the graph goes from positive. So it goes from increasing. You know, it's going up, it's going up at this point. Then it becomes negative. So then it, then it starts to decrease. So then you could have a local max there but nothing else, nothing special at negative two. Um, let me just show you the full answer I wrote that you can save you some time. This is the work I use. Yeah, I don't even think it had to be this elaborate. In their answer key, they did less work, but I love math, so here it is. I just showed the you know, table with positive signs, negative signs. And negative and horizontal tangents at negative two and two. I say there's neither a max or local max or min at negative two because it changes sign, and a, ma a local max at two because it changes from positive to negative there. All right, and last part find all values of x on the open interval negative 63 for which a graph of g has a point of inflection. Okay, so now we're taking it up one more level. Remember, we find the points of inflection, we want to study the second derivative. So we're going to take g double prime of x, which means we take f prime of x. Now, we want to, you know, well, just like when we were studying critical points to figure out if there's a local max or minimum, to figure out their inflection points, let's remember that we want to see like where the second derivative could be zero. You know, those are like those are like the critical points for the second derivative. So we not in this case we have the we, second derivative of g is equal to the first derivative of f. So we set the first derivative of f equal to zero. We want to we want to understand what's happening at those points. And flipping back just to take a look. First derivative, remember like horizontal tangent lines and we look at the graph. So we probably have one over here on the top of this, you know, pyramid. Oh yeah, and one over here, at the bottom at negative two, at the bottom of the pyramid, and over here on top of the hill. One, two, three. 
none of those threats. So negative four, negative two, zero. So let's, we're going to study. By study, I mean look at and write stuff. Horizontal tangents. This is the wrong part. And I don't need to put horizontal tangents. Uh, okay, to points, inflection points. At, we have x negative four, negative two, and zero as our possible candidates. Pot maybe, maybe. Again, we just we want to check for that. So this is not the end. Um, so we can look now at the interval broken up. Interval is broken up at negative four. Negative two and zero. We want to see what, what's going on with the second derivative, or in this case, the first derivative, which lets us understand what's going on with the second derivative. So going back to the first derivative of f of x, what we were looking at, where is it again? Where did I put it? Oh, well, yeah, the graph. Uh, right, the first derivative. So, so we were just looking at to how the we're looking at like the slopes of the graph that tells us that the first derivative behavior of f so up before negative four the first derivative is positive because we're going up after negative four it's negative because it's going down so i just do positive negative yeah i see or you can write positive and pos and negative there so now let's look at between negative two and zero Aha, uh -huh. positive again. Let me use a red pen to like emphasize that this is some serious stuff. Red over here, because it's going up. Oh no, it's off. Now it's, it's not, well, now it's minus, it's going down. This red is one of the red, worst red pens I've ever grabbed. Um, I don't know why it's writing like this. But all right. So positive, negative, increasing, decreasing at zero. Um, so positive, negative. So we want to see where it changes signs. So it changes signs here. An inflection point at negative four goes from because we see that it goes from increasing or positive to negative. Um, now remember also the increase or for second for for second derivatives concave up versus concave down. So when it's negative, it's concave down. The graph will, or the graph will, will behave like that. I don't think it has to be like a perfect parabola, but as you can see it has a general shape. Down and positive, concave up again and down again. We got inflection points on all of them. Wow, okay, so we're good. And we could say because F prime of X changes signs there, it changes signs at these three points. All right, so there you go. That's it for that for response question. So as usual, feel free to leave comments and ask me questions. Um, that maybe you were confused about, you know, give me feedback, critique me. I know I'm not the best. I'm working on it though, it's because, it, um, you know, I'm always wanted to, I want to make sure that these are like very clear for you guys. But of course, I'm, since I'm talking to a TV screen, I don't have immediate feedback. So let me know if there's, if there's anything you're confused about. Other than that, make sure you, you know, you give me a thumbs up or two and make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you guys in the next video.